Hey guys, it's Christopher and welcome to another Solaris tutorial. Um, I will show you how to create a non-playing character in this video and how we can interact with with him. So chapter 17 non-playing characters. Okay. So let's make a small house. Um, Kakariko Village. So, if you watched the previous chapter about stores, we actually made uh, a non-playing character, but there was there was no interaction. So, NPCs can be created from here this icon for non-playing characters and there are two types of non-playing characters real characters so people <laughs> or generally generalized NPCs these ones are mm, non-human they are solid so, um, solid objects so for example a sign so let's make First, a human NPC. You can choose the initial the, the direction of the non-playing character, and you have to choose a sprite. Uh, for example, link to the past villager. Okay, so this is a, a human NPC, usual NPC, and let's make also a generalized NPC just to show you the difference. For these ones, um, the sprite is optional, and the main difference between them is that there, there is nothing, there is no predetermined behavior of generalized NPCs. So, for example, uh, if you make a sign, okay, so this is a generalized playing character. And a first difference between oops between them okay game manager chapter sixteen <coughs> oh <laughs> okay you have to make a destination of course If you talk to uh, an, a human NPC, so you interact with the action key, which is by default space, the character will um, turn to your direction. This is a predetermined behavior of human NPCs, and this is not true for generalized NPCs. You see, this sign is something solid. It has no default behavior and the direction property is very important for this one. It means that you can interact only in this direction. There is also the special direction any if you want to make an object um, and allow the player to interact from any direction. So th it, it, you can only interact from the, the south in this case. And well, so how to make re to really make the interaction to implement the interactions? There are three three possible kind of actions. Show a dialogue. It's the mm, simplest possible action. Let's say we will make a dialogue called like this: Chapter sixteen. Dot hello. Chapter 16, hello. Just to show you. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, how to show a dialogue from a, a character. Hello, young man. 
What? A lovely day. Oh, it's not working. No, no. It's this is an old error. So why don't we see anything? Show message. Chapter sixteen. Hello. What is wrong with you? Chapter sixteen. Hello. Save. Maybe I forgot to save. Mm -hmm. What did I do? Hmm. What's wrong? And why is there no no error? Oh, maybe it's the map that I didn't save. Okay, sorry about that. Hello, your mind, what a lovely day. So, you know how to make a character that shows a dialogue. And if you want to make something more uh, uh, complex that, than just a dialogue, you can call a script so it can be a map script or an item script um, but in most of the time it will be a map script because most characters most non-playing characters are like this a character on a specific map so you want to call the map script this is more specific and we, we will not cover this kind of call uh, today Okay, call the map script and if you open the map script, let's go. Get the map, get the game. And we will need to give a name to our character. So chapter seven uh sixteen trade NPC because we are going to make a very small trading sequence so function let's copy paste the name and save so for a non-playing character mm, no matter if it is a, a human character or a generalized character it's always this function this this event on interaction that get gets called when the player interacts so uh, what we are going to do in this example is we will make uh, the character will want some item and if you if you give the item, she will give the player. Uh, she will give another item to the player, so it, it will be the flippers. But we need we need a first item to to give, and we will not do that with the shield or the sword. So let's make another one. And just for this example, I will make this one. It's an item that exists in Zelda Mystery of Solaris DX Firestone. Firestone. Okay. And this item has really no behavior at all except for being saved in a save game variable. Okay. 
so that's it. We will need a dialogue also. Treasure fire. So it's, it's just for this example, of course, in your game, you can do any object you want. You found a firestone! Yoopoo! So let's give the firestone in some chests. Okay. <coughs> Maybe I can already test this. Okay, it works. So, let's go. What we want is this character to ask for a firestone. So instead of saying this, she will say, mm, I want a firestone, please. I des desperately want a firestone. Okay, she will say that when you don't have the firestone. And when you have the firestone, she will say, please give me your firestone. Give me this firestone. And you will be able to say either yes or no. So to ask a question in this dialog box system, in the dialog box system of this quest, because all of this is, I mean, this sequence here is not something from the engine; it's something from the quest. This dialog box box script. So that's how you ask a question to the player if you don't remember, or if you didn't see the the tutorial about um, the save game. I think it was about the save game. Um, and then another one where we she will say thanks. Oh, thank you so much. She's crazy. She's completely crazy. <laughs> mm, what can I do in return? Take this! And at this moment she will give the flippers, of course. And let's make a final one where she's just happy if you come back later. Thanks again! Ok, these are our dialogues. Again, in a future version um, there will be a user graphical interface to make dialogues. And the most important thing, the script. So, let's get the Firestone item. Get item Firestone. Uh, so if game has item, or more precisely, if not game has item Firestone, then game start dialogue. Uh, it was this one. Okay. Else, actually, this this will be needed only later. Game start dialogue. Um, give it to me. And I remember you, d you remember, or maybe you don't remember, or didn't see how uh, this works to get the answer from the player actually when the dialogue ends when the dialogue ends um, the function that you give here as a second argument will be called so this one you call it right now and this is the value of of type function that 
will be called only later by the engine when the dialogue this dialogue finishes and also it will be called with very importantly this parameter that you can call uh, as you want but answer is a good name and this will be equal to the line that was selected by the player so line 2 or line 3 it's the line uh, it, it will always be between 1 and 4 because uh, dialogues are by groups of four lines uh, okay so if answer is equal to two then and only here we need the firestone no first she will say that so let's start yet another dialogue. She says thanks and when the thanks dialogue finishes another callback. Uh, I should close these functions and these uh, conditions. Okay. When the thing thanks dialogue finishes we set the position state of the firestone to zero to remove it from the player set variant zero and we give the flippers so the, the hero will brandish the flippers and you do this with start treasure so um, in the chapter about treasures we saw uh, how to make a treasure in a in a treasure chest, a pickable treasure, a treasure under some destructible items like a bush. Uh, we also have seen the shop treasures, and you can also put treasures uh, dropped by enemies. But this is yet yet another <laughs> type of treasure, a treasure um, given by the script. Lua script. Uh, and if you read the documentation of uh, Star Treasure, map entities, hero, where is he? Mm. Star Treasure, there are three parameters the item name, the variant, and the save game variable. Oh, there is even <laughs> also a callback but we don't need it. So we give the flippers in variant 1 and uh, let's save the state of giving this treasure. Chapter 17, oops. No. Chapter 17 got flippers. 16, why <laughs> I am why do I, I keep seeing, uh, saying 17? Okay. So I think we're good. Except for one last small detail. If the player has already done all of this. So, and to know that we can just get the, this value. So game get saved value. Get value. This one. If it's true, then it's already done. So we do nothing. No, no, we don't exactly do nothing. We said that we wanted to show this dialogue. Chapter sixteen. Happy. And return. Okay, let's try it. So first, if I don't have the firestone, I desperately want firestone. You found a firestone. Please give me this firestone. No. So in this case, she says she says nothing more. But if you want, you can say something by doing an 
an else to this if. And if you say yes, oh thank you so much, what can I do in return? Take this! You found the flippers. You can now swim in deep water. Okay. Perfect. And if you talk to her again, thanks again. So, okay, you you know how to make a character who interacts with the player in a trading sequence. And also, if you don't want to save the tra the treasure treasure state if it's something very local to this map and you don't want to remember to store the information you can do something actually simpler which is just make a boolean local to this file to this map initially false and instead of getting the stored value in the save game you just test this boolean and here you don't save the treasure but you set the variable to true so I have the flippers. Um, thanks again. And if I save and come back later, or if I just get out of the map, but there is no exit, <laughs> everything is reset. So not not really everything because the items themselves um, are, are saved. So I still have the flippers. Or maybe not. Okay, no, but I have the swimming ability. Because the abilities are saved. Anyway. Um, so this is how to make non-playing characters. And in the next chapter we will see more about um, generalized non-playing characters. Okay, thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.